Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to Skyblock 116. I hope you guys are having a great day out there. And <laughs> there's a guy creeping in the window up there. For a start, at the start of this episode, you may notice a couple of changes. The eagle-eyed viewers amongst you, or those of you with a crispy television that you might be watching this on. I know there's a few people out there who do like to watch these episodes on a TV might notice that we are now in 4K or up to 4K resolution. All of the other resolutions are still going to be available for people who don't have the bandwidth, but I've been making some upgrades around my studio. More on that in future episodes of the Survival Guide and a couple of other neat little projects I have coming up. But yeah, I got myself a 4K monitor for the first time ever. My monitor is now higher resolution than my actual TV set. It's kind of bizarre. But anyway, it means I can bring 4K videos to you guys and hopefully it'll just look a little bit more crispy around here. But even though we have villagers set up over here in this little hotel, I still need to do a couple of things to them. For a start, I want to zombify all of them, but that is going to be a slightly more complex task. Oh, we got some little ones running around as well. Fantastic. It's going to be a slightly more complex task than I initially thought because, of course, we need to make sure that the iron golems aren't going to kill them all when they are zombified, and we need the supplies to be able to cure them. And while, of course, in my survival guide series, I am entirely used to having all the golden apples that I can possibly want, in this series we are unfortunately hampered by the fact that I can only gather so much gold at a time, and I have been farming a little bit of it off camera at my zombie pigman farm, but I want to make some improvements to that farm because there are currently a couple of flaws there. The first problem being the piglins that spawn in here and take up the mob cap that could be taken up by zombified piglins. Now that we have sweeping edge on this sword it is much easier to dispatch the zombie piglins but then the rest of the piglins just kind of hang around inside the farm and the only way to prevent them from spawning is to build the spawning floor out of magma blocks. Now, in the survival guide world, I was able to get magma blocks from the nether terrain around me, but as you can see, not really an option here in Skyblock. Instead, we're going to have to take advantage of the crafting recipe for magma blocks, which involves getting some magma cream dropped by magma cubes and crafting it in a 2x2. That will give us one magma block, so we will need to make a pretty sizable magma cube farm in order to get hold of a decent supply and a renewable supply of magma blocks to create a better spawning platform in here. The other problem with this farm, of course, is that I have to do this little run back and forth maneuver so that I can get more stuff to spawn, because when I was constructing this, I ended up putting the killing area right next to the spawning platform, meaning that I have to run all the way back here to spawn some more zombie piglins in and then run back over here in order to dispatch them, and it just gets a little bit tiresome doing that. So I think what I want to do is get enough magma blocks that we can set up something akin to the donut-style gold farm that we have in the survival guide world, a multi-floor monstrosity full to the brim of zombified piglins and probably built even more efficiently owing to the fact that we can build it lower down in the world here because there is no terrain to contend with and nothing to hamper the spawn rates if we build it down here in the void of Skyblock. One of the other things I would love to get is looting because despite the fact that we are getting a reasonable amount of gold nuggets and the occasional gold ingot out of these guys, I think we'll be able to get more than that if we get looting on a sword. So one of the reasons I'm breeding up a few more villagers up there is so that we can end up with looting on the sword as well. And that is going to be doubly useful when it comes to the magma cube farm because magma cream does not drop all that often from magma cubes. In fact, I think it's only the medium sized ones that really drop it all that often. And so having a looting sword is going to mean if we get to kill them manually, it's going to be a really easy way of getting lots of magma cream very fast. Fortunately for us, the introduction of the basalt delta biome, like the island that we originally started on out here, has meant that we get a brand new way of farming magma cubes in Minecraft. Minecraft 1.16 allows for magma cubes to spawn on any solid blocks inside of a basalt delta, and they are the only thing that seems to spawn in this biome, meaning that if we can set up a spawning platform once again, at the bottom of the world down here, kind of like the slime farm that we set up in the overworld, we could see unprecedented rates of magma cube spawning, and that is really going to work out very well for us farming up some magma blocks. I've even come up with a couple of designs for my own magma cube farm, just kind of thrown together in a creative test version of this skyblock map. But unfortunately for me, it's going to take a little bit more work than just putting some blocks down. 
While we're on the subject of new innovations to Minecraft, the Magma Cube farm is going to rely quite heavily on something that arrived in Minecraft 1.15. That's right, beehives. Oh, I was really hoping that this birch tree was going to play ball and actually generate a beehive as I said that. He was, I was hoping for a little bit of video magic to come up, but it didn't really happen in the end. All right, I'm going to take down this tree and try again. Let's see if, <laughs> let's see how many attempts it will take me to get a tree that has a beehive in it. Tree number two, no hive. Tree number three, nah, doesn't look like it either. What could be behind tree number four? Not a beehive, apparently. Tree number 10. Yes, there we go. Finally, I even put down a few extra saplings so that we could go through a few of them. We have a bee at last. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited to see them because these folks are going to be producing honey blocks for us, or at least honey in its raw form, which will be then be able to craft into honey blocks. One of the things we need to do in this magma cube farm is limit the jump height of magma cubes because they can jump super high. And in theory, if we end up having a bunch of honey blocks around we can get the magma cubes to limit the heights of their jump meaning that we don't have to worry too much about the way the farm is constructed i have a few plans for that as well but in the meantime i do think it's going to be nice to have some honey around so i'm going to need to get a campfire so that we can take this hive down without the bees getting mad at me now one of the things we will have to be a little bit cautious of and the reason i'm quite keen on moving this beehive as soon as possible is that the bees pathfinding tends to act up a little bit in Skyblock. The reason for that is that, unfortunately, the bees' pathfinding requires them to float downwards towards a solid block. And if they get out over the void and start to float downwards, typically you'll find that they just kind of descend into the void and get stuck there. So realistically, what we want is for our bees to just remain nice and chill inside the hive. And it looks like most of them have been now. I can't see where that last one went. Is it stuck up here somewhere or did it end up staying in the hive? Either way, now seems like the time to break this with our silk touch tool. And there we go. We got hold of the hive with all of our bees inside. Hopefully, at least two of them anyway. And two will be all we need because we can start to breed them up with flowers. And the flowers will allow us to breed more bees. We can put them to work in more hives and hopefully gather a little bit of honeycomb so we can start to make artificial hives as well as the naturally occurring bee nests. So the next step of this really is going to be to make an enclosure for the bees. And for that, I think I'm going to rely on the glass supply of my librarians and we're going to make a kind of greenhouse structure for them to hang out in probably not quite as you know ornate as a greenhouse but i think we can do it justice and having a lot of glass will mean that we can at least see what's going on on the inside now we have a couple of unemployed villagers it looks like so i think some of those younger villagers have now grown up and we can start to put them to work i'm going to make one of them a librarian in the hope that we will be able to get a looting book from them and I'm also going to make one of them a stonemason to see if we can have a chance at getting hold of maybe some glazed terracotta or maybe some regular terracotta, other building blocks that we don't really have access to because of working in this skyblock world. The stone cutter recipe should be pretty simple. All we should need is three stone and an iron ingot, like so, basically a slab with a circular saw in it is the stone cutter. And now let's see where I put the rest of those bookshelves that I made earlier, unless I ended up breaking them down for books and then trading them back. Nope, there they are, we got some in there. Okay, fantastic. So I can make a couple more jungle slabs and we can turn that into a lectern, brilliant. And we'll pop those down in here. We'll have one lectern there for a brand new villager to take up as a job site. Which one will it be? Is it you? It is you. Okay, fantastic. What have you got? Aqua Affinity. Not sure I will need that in the Sky World, but there you go. We'll try and reroll that in a second. For now, though, we'll pop down a stone cutter over here and see if the other unemployed villager wanders over and yes, becomes a stonemason, and he's already trading bricks. Fantastic. We might end up taking advantage of that trade. Haven't really got any clay to trade you, so feels like the only thing that we can really do at this point. And what does that mean you get next? Ooh, chiseled stone bricks. Exciting. And I guess we could always start to trade him stone for emeralds if I feel like farming a whole bunch of stone. But you know what? I think I need to clear out my inventory a little bit before I get stuck into trading here. A few somewhat questionable trades later. Our new mason is a master. So now he will trade me blocks of quartz and quartz pillars. That's absolutely fantastic. It's really nice to have a trade for that instead of worrying too much 
about having to use some of the quartz that we're getting from the piglins in blocks because we can use that for redstone components like comparators and observers which we will need many of further down the line now let's take a look at this librarians conference here that's our fortune trader right there one of these folks here i think it's this one now has a power one trade and if we take away his workstation here he'll revert back into a normal villager and we can try and re-roll his trades until he ends up with a looting three trade ideally or at least looting one that we can work with thorns eh, i don't really care for thorns let's not worry about that now we got a few more villagers in the house i think the hardest part of this whole process is not accidentally hitting one of them when i'm taking the workstation away i really don't want that iron golem to get angry at me and start to fight me but i think uh do we have another librarian around here who wants to take a workstation there we go looting one okay we need to lock this in real fast and these are all sleeping right now so hopefully they shouldn't do anything else with resetting their trades i can wake that guy up for a late night trading session and get myself probably four looting one books will be enough because that'll take us all the way to looting three if i combine them now i just have to figure out where i left the books all right wakey wakey rise and shine let's see if you've still got it you have fantastic looting all right now i just need to trade a little bit more with one of the blacksmiths to get myself some more emeralds and we should have enough for looting book number four amazing stuff now we should have looting three on the sword which is really going to up our gold production and hopefully eventually the production of some magma cream oh it's gonna cost us 24 levels to do it mind you it's fine i have <laughs> i have 42 levels right now that should be enough smite four sweeping edge mending looting three very nice the smite won't really help us with the magma cubes but you know what i reckon we can probably get a sharpness trade sooner or later and have a second sword this one will do very well for the piglins in the gold farm we should have no problem with that for now though we're going to switch gears and we're going to go back to farming some bees because really getting some honey blocks is going to be useful for us in the long run as well and it's going to be kind of pivotal to this magma cream farm so let's dig up the beehive and let's get to building a greenhouse Really, part of the first phase of this is going to be building out a grass platform here next to the villager hotel where I'm going to be doing a more substantial amount of flower farming because flowers are not only objects of interest for bees, they are also what bees need to breed. So I'm going to put out a little bit more dirt over here. The grass is going to spread to it and hopefully we should be able to harvest a few more flowers just by bone mealing it once or twice. And that's already looking like a healthy bunch of flowers. We've got some corn flowers in there as well. Oh, brilliant. This is going to be perfect. This also kind of leads into some of the optional objectives you'll find in the advancements of Skyblock, which require you to get hold of like lots of different colors of material and end up with every color of dye possible. Every color of wool, concrete, and terracotta is in there as well. And we are part of the way there, considering that we can already trade a bunch of stuff from shepherds and masons in order to get every color of wool and terracotta i have a feeling that we should be able to get the concrete sorted out if we can get enough dye from this but they're also as i said going to be food for the bees <gasps> there's a cat <laughs> the villagers must have spawned it in oh, i forgot this was the mechanic of a village but i guess we have a pretty sizable village up there now with all of the extra beds and stuff hello man i really need to start fishing so we can tame these cats but oh that's so nice having cats in our skyblock world that's super cute so yeah we now have a pair of stray cats <laughs> inside this little fenced off enclosure i thought it was best to keep them there for now so they don't end up running off of the edge of the world or something like that but wow a few cats in here who'd have thought it but anyway i'm now at the point where i think i have enough flowers to get us started breeding up some bees the next stage is to work on the greenhouse style but i first of all want to maybe see if we can get a few more stonemasons recruited because if we can get one that trades us some yellow terracotta and maybe some brown terracotta go in there as well i think we can put together a slightly more thematic idea over here and excuse me skeleton oh i didn't light up the platform did i we got another stone mason here let's see what we get oh we can trade in andesite or granite unfortunately i can't really make either of those all that easily not in those quantities at least so maybe we'll have to just continue trading chiseled stone brick until he unlocks some more useful trades no, we got some brown and light blue glazed terracotta from you, but hey, it's a start at least, and I seem to be on the right track with this. We will at least be able to get some various colors of plain terracotta from them, so maybe just a couple more villagers in here is necessary. 
Yes, unbelievable. We actually got one. One of these masons, and I forget which one it is. I think it's one of the ones who has the gold badge on the belt, or maybe emerald now. Yes, there we go. An expert mason trades us yellow terracotta. At last, we have access to yellow. I also got a little bit of blue terracotta, which looks very nice, actually. I might end up using that in some more fancy builds that we're doing here, but I'm so happy that we got ourselves some yellow terracotta. It means we can actually move forward with the beehive theme I was planning on going for and hopefully we can get some brown or black terracotta to match that and have the really kind of bee striped colors the yellow and black and that kind of that kind of black is not necessarily all the way black it's like a kind of dark brown kind of like the outline of the chests here which is perfect for bee colors but I've expanded the grass platform here a little bit with some more dirt just so we can kind of lay out the foundation for what I want to do here, which is probably going to be a kind of larger hexagonal kind of footprint to the whole thing, probably marked out in this yellow terracotta around the outside. And then on the inside, we're going to have a glass kind of prism rising up from the ground that's going to have maybe a tree or two in it. But around the outside is where we are going to be placing all of the bee nests and bee hives and then from there we're going to have all of the dispensers and stuff like that that are going to be bottling the honey for us so it's going to be a pretty automated farm by the end of this we're not going to be doing all of this stuff manually we are going to have the honey farmed for us in the background and that's put the finishing touches on what I think is going to be a fun little container for our bees. Now, this is kind of an odd design, but I quite like it in a sense. It's kind of like the way I've been looking at this. The yellow sort of reminded me of those kind of rubberized silicone um, like kitchen implements or something, almost like a Tupperware pot or like a travel mug or something like that, where the top has been kind of like fitted on and sealed down a little bit with the uh, oak wood planks there, the dark oak wood planks just kind of giving a little bit of a seal cork effect to the place, I suppose. But this is where our bees are going to be stored. We're going to have a birch tree in the center here, surround that by flowers, and then on top of each of these dispensers is where we're going to be placing our hives, with the idea being that they tick basically any time the hive reaches a certain... Actually, no, that's not going to work because we need a comparator, don't we? I've been thinking we were doing this with observers the entire time. That might work for honeycomb. It's not going to work for honey. We're going to need comparators to make sure that the honey is ready to harvest. So let me rewire the redstone for a second. Okay, we kind of have to flip the redstone circuitry on its head here. I actually went back and looked at the Survival Guide World Honey Farm to make sure I was doing this right because <laughs> it has been a little while since I messed with the bee mechanics in this game. But thankfully for me, they have remained relatively unchanged and they are quite straightforward once you know the tricks so what we're going to do here is have a an output chest there for the honey two hoppers here collecting whatever comes out of these dispensers and then our bee nests slash hives are going to be going on top of each of these hoppers with the dispenser facing downwards into them. I've also had to remove a little bit of the rubberized seal part of this up here so that I can make a little bit of headroom for this device. So what we can do is come out two blocks that way and some redstone wire is going to go on top of these. It can also come up one more block on the edge there and have the wire travel on top of that. Now, this is very important. This next step either needs to be a transparent block like glass or a slab, so it does not break the redstone wire circuit here. Instead, allowing the wire to wrap around on top of that, and we're going to place a couple more blocks, which in this case I think will have to be blue terracotta like so. We're gonna pop them on there, and they are going to be activating blocks above here. So we're going to break out those two blocks. We're going to place our blue terracotta in there. We're going to place some other kind of block here, which is probably just going to be some more blue terracotta. And then we'll place the redstone dust there and repeaters facing into those blocks. And the dispensers are going to be full up of glass bottles in all nine slots. And the fact that they remain full is perhaps the most important part of this farm, because you'll remember if you use a dispenser on a full hive of honey, it actually retracts the bottle of honey back into the dispenser. It basically harvests it and then gobbles it back up again instead of spitting it out directly and into the hopper waiting below. So by filling up the glass bottles, we're not giving it anywhere to go. So then the dispenser naturally just spits out the bottle of honey instead of keeping it for itself. And then that ends up going into the hopper through the hive block and into this chest where we can grab grab it nice and easily. We're going to put a block above that, make sure it's a transparent block like glass so we can still open the chest and that way the bees don't get out 
when we open that. That's going to work out pretty well, I think. Now we just have to break our way in here, probably block up one half of this, but we're going to place the bee nest back on here, and I've dotted a couple of flowers around here for the bees to enjoy. And stepping back outside of the farm, we can allow the bees to work in their hive. But it is nighttime right now, and if I recall correctly, bees don't tend to step outside of the hive or fly outside of the hive at night time, so we are good for now. However, we can see this is already outputting a comparator signal, meaning if we check the F3 information there, we have a honey level of three. There is honey being produced in this hive. So let's see what happens if we go to sleep and the bees start to work in the morning. All right, good morning, and hopefully we should start to see the bees come out of the nest. Now, you'll, yep, there we go. You can see they only come out of the side of the nest block that has those holes in it, so you need to make sure that is facing in towards the farm. But we should see one or two bees pop out of here, and when they do, we can always go in there and give them some flowers so that they will breed up. But I'm fairly certain we have three bees in this nest already, we, meaning we will need either some honeycomb or another bee nest if we want to create another home for bees that we breed up. And unfortunately, it looks like we've created a tiny amount of spawnable space on top of this thing. I thought I'd lit it up adequately, but apparently I have not. So while that zombie has just burned in the daylight, yeah, there we go. I missed this edge over here. I should just pop down a couple of torches just to make sure that we don't get any unwanted spawns up here. The slabs will be fine, of course. And as we hop down here, hopefully the bees working in the hive should now be ready to produce honey. In fact, I think the mechanism has fired and we have one bottle of honey in the chest. That is working very, very well. That's great to see. Now, all I should need to do is trade up a bunch of glass with the librarians in my villager hotel and we should be able to start stocking these dispensers with glass bottles, which I think I might need to create some sort of, I don't know, maybe a, uh, a stair block or something here so I can access the dispenser, make sure that we get some more stuff flowing into there. An alternative way of doing that could be to have a hopper with a chest on top of it and then lower the ceiling of this a little bit so we can access the chests but the bees can't get out. Either way, we should end up with a decent amount of honey now flowing into here as long as we can supply the dispensers with glass bottles. Which means it's time to start trying to get hold of some more bees. And I think instead of creating artificial hives, what I would really like to do is create a few more natural bee nests. So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time in here farming some more birch trees and seeing if we can't produce another bee nest or two. Well, I managed to get one more bee nest out of a birch tree here. I've been farming these for a while, actually. I started doing them two at a time on each of these podzole blocks to see if I could get one. And I was about to look up whether you could even grow beehives from birch trees on podzole as if that was gonna be a thing. But no, we got one and I've already planted it right there in the machine. So now all of the bees should be coming out into this area. The birch tree in here just never grew. I think maybe because the roof is too low in here or something, but either way, we are now getting enough honey bottles that I can start to make honey blocks. And the best part of that is we get the glass bottles back and can recycle them back into the dispensers. I will only need nine or maybe 12 honey blocks for the area of the magma cube farm that I have in mind because I just want to make sure that there are enough honey blocks that once the magma cubes jump onto them, they can't really jump particularly high outside of that. Like their jump height is going to be so small that they won't be able to leap over whatever barrier I've set up and get me. That's the plan, but we're going to tackle that in a future episode because I think all of the bee farming and stuff is enough for today. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Skyblock116. I do hope you've enjoyed it. My name has been Pixarifs. Don't forget to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more. Let me know in the comments if you've been watching in 4K, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.